Hi, welcome to White Threads Floss Tube number 92. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today I thought that I would show you how to tea dye linen. This is something that perhaps you've heard about doing and never attempted before. Well, it's actually really easy. So I used tea dye linen in tea dyed linen in this project here, which you've seen a lot about in the last little while because it's the um, the subject of my new online course and it's probably the most popular project from my book Freezy and White Work. Um, so this linen, I actually tea dyed it so that it was quite blotchy. When I tea dye for the people who are in my course and send it out pre-dyed, um, I actually do it to a lot more even and less blotchiness colour. Um, and that's because if it's blotchy and you don't like blotchy, you can't make it unblotchy. But if it's not blotchy and you like blotchy, you can also use the tea bag that I supply to add your blotches. Um, and that's so it gives you a bit more, um, what's the word? flexibility. So today I'm going to show you how to do an unblotchy, a non-blotchy dye and then I'm going to show you also how to do a blotchy one. So I need to go and get my kettle from the kitchen with the boiled water in it and then I'll come back and show you. So what do you need when you're going to tea dye something? Well first of all the first thing you need is your piece of linen that you're going to dye and so this piece is about 20 by 20 centimeters and I've actually got two here so that I can show you two different ways and then I've got this big plastic container which is big enough to take the whole of the piece of linen in it. I can, if I only have a small container, I could do it so that it was folded over but I just don't know if I'd end up with a fold mark in the dyeing so I prefer to try and find something that's flat that I can have my um, Sorry, that I can have my fabric flat in. So I've got them. Then I've also got a couple of tea bags. I probably only am going to need one because it's a very small piece of fabric. And even doing the second one, it's really not going to probably need all that much um, tea. Then I've got a pair of tongs because we are going to be dealing with boiling water. And to start off with, that's quite hot. Of course, it does get less. And then I've got my kettle which has got my boiling water in it. Um, so if you are a country that doesn't have kettles, you'll need to boil some on the stove in probably in a saucepan and then use that. So this is freshly boiled water and I'm now going to pour it. Well, what I can do is I can pour it in and put uh, with the fabric already in there or I can keep the fabric out and just pour the water in. So I might do that. So what I want to do first of all is I want to do my um, one that's nicely and evenly dyed so not blotchy. So what I've got here is I haven't, sorry I'm just going to move that out of the way so it doesn't create a shadow. What I've got here is just enough water in the bottom. I might just put a little bit extra because over in this corner here it's not quite full. There we are. So that's filled up enough now. No, it hasn't. <laughs> you can see my table's on a slope, can't you? Okay, so I'm going to put my tea bag in, and this is where I start to use my tongs because uh, I don't really want to burn myself today. So just swish it around in the water, and you'll need a fair bit of colour there. And if your tongs aren't too um, sharp, you can put them in and squeeze the tea bag otherwise just hold the tea bag if you're a bit scared that it might break open the tea bag I and mean, we don't really want that then just just hold it rather than squeezing it as I am so we need a fair bit of color okay it's reasonable so what we might do is put that in and that's going to dye it so I want to actually submerge the whole thing submerged and if I take that out it definitely has changed color if you compare the two different ones a bit hard to tell when it's a bit wet like that so but I think that it could do with a little bit more color yet now if you're worried about your fabric um, fraying when you do this then just overlock or surge or zigzag the edges before you start. I just don't tend to, generally tend to worry because I'm not going to be squeezing this out or anything like that. Okay, so that's pretty well dyed. And if I used that, if I dyed, sorry, dried that and used it as is, there would be a reasonable amount of colour on that. But if I decided that it wasn't enough, then I could dye it again. Come back um, 
dunk it again in some more boiling water and then add some more tea to the water and that would dye it so that it was a bit darker so I'm just going to take that out and I'm quite happy with that that is about the color that I would use if I was sending it off to one of my class participants it's got a bit of color but not a heap so I just put that aside and I'm going to put the other one in now now this is the one that I want to make blotchy and the way I do this is I actually squeeze the fabric sorry the the tea bag onto it I actually want a little bit less water in this so I'm just going to tip it so that it's got wet but okay that's the sort of thing that I want to happen so that you can see the color now every time it washes back like that it sort of washes out so I think that I'm going to need to do I have a container yes I've got a container here I'm going to pour some of that water out and then just do my blotchiness okay now it's probably still even a bit too much that might do No, I'm going to get rid of it. Now what that means is there's really probably no heat left. Oh, there's a little bit of heat. And actually, I could just start using my fingers because it's not hot anymore. And squeezing extra bits on like that. If you don't think that there's going to be enough colour, then you can always... So that's quite blotchy, but it's not really what I exactly want. I'm going to tip some more of that out. I really, really, really want blotchy, blotchy. Okay, this might be where the second um, tea bag needs to come into play. So I've Put that in my water that I've tipped off and now it's starting yeah that's gonna do it okay so you can see now that that's got quite a blotchy appearance to it which is what I want and what I will do is I will dry these off and I'll show them to you when they're dry so that's the process I don't bother rinsing these or anything like that um, I just uh, just leave them to dry like that so I'll go and hang them outside in the Sun um, and let them dry so I'm back and it's about an hour later and I've got my two samples that I dyed before now I'm putting up a piece of paper behind this so that you can see the color better so this is white paper, which is pretty much what we started off with in terms of the color of our linen. And this was the even tea dye one without any splotches onto it. So you can see that there's quite a bit of color there. And comparing that to my actual piece, can you see the two together? Not very well. Um, it's a bit lighter. And that's the way I send them off to the participants in my class when they're pre-dyed. Um, if you are wanting to buy a supplies pack with pre-dyed linen, just contact me and I'm happy to do it for you. Just let me know if you want it to be evenly dyed or splotchy. Happy to do it either way. Um, so yes, that's the even dye one. And now I'll put up the one that is the splotchy dye. And look, it's not hugely different, but you can see up here and over here and perhaps in the middle here, it is a bit darker. And sometimes if that's the effect that you want, um, because you want it to have an aged-ish sort of look, then that's how you would go about doing that. You would dye it, um, the whole thing, and then add your splotches on. And you can get quite dark splotches if you want to. So on my uh, piece here, you can see up, oh, where is it? Up here if there's quite a big dark patch and I'm fine with that I actually really like that some people don't though so that's why I don't supply linen like that um, so therefore we have our two pieces we have our two different ways of dyeing it hang on I'll try and get that actually on the screen uh, this is the blotchy one and this is the plain colored one and so now you know how to get you two different styles of dyeing 
for working your embroidery on. The other thing that I wanted to suggest, and I've never actually done this, but I think my sister has, that doesn't translate into my experience though, is that you could try using different types of tea bags. So these were just normal black tea. You could try using green tea. Um, I think that would probably, uh, green tea isn't green, but it would be probably a softer effect. Um, but you could try things like raspberry leaf tea. <coughs> Excuse me. Although raspberry leaf tea is the leaves. Raspberry tea or some of the fruit teas, they might provide you with quite different colours. You might be able to get some pinks um, and some more orangey colours out of them. So it's worth giving a go. I don't think I've got any here. So otherwise, otherwise I would have given them a go to show you. But that is something that you could try if you wanted to try doing different styles of tea dyeing. So I hope that's opened up some possibilities of something new for you today. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do subscribe to my channel. Um, when you subscribe, so that you get notifications, next to the subscribe button, there's a little bell. If you click on the bell, that will um, activate the notifications for you so that every time I put up a new video, you are notified that that has happened. So thanks for joining me today and I will see you next time. Bye.